I want you all to look at these. All of these USDA certified organic fruits. You know, banana, watermelon, all that good stuff. But what if I were to tell you that all of these fruits have been undergoing centuries of selective gene editing? What if these are what they naturally and originally were? Now, am I telling you that these fruits have been inserted with a foreign gene to make their genome different? Not quite. But the truth is, is the process that got us from those fruits to these fruits is a primitive form of genetic modification. And by definition, that means that these fruits are GMOs. But before anyone jumps to conclusions, let's back up a little. The definition of a GMO is a genetically modified organism. That just means that we have somehow added in some genes or taken some out or emphasized some or de-emphasized some or just done something to change the genome of the organism in order to give it some particular traits. Now, even though a lot of us don't know what a GMO is, they're actually already a gigantic part of a society. But even so, here's what people had to say about GMOs when asked. But in reality, when we asked them what the GMO stands for, this is what they said. <laughs> I believe the reason why the term GMO has become so stigmatized is because it's been put into the food industry as this negative term for the mistreatment of produce and animals. And because of that, it's been undergone a huge stigma. For example, force feeding chickens with hormone enriched diets is not genetically modifying. When I say genetically modifying, that means we're changing something within the coding of how we work in the DNA. Now, if we were talking about a plant that was engineered to produce its own pesticides, that's genetically engineering. But simply spraying pesticides or pumping in hormones is not. So when we're force feeding the chicken with hormone, all we're really doing is force feeding the chicken with hormones. Now, the process that got us from old world fruits to new world fruits is just one section of genetic modification. The other section has to happen in a lab. And this includes things like rice engineered to produce vitamin A, or microorganisms that manufacture polymers quicker and more efficiently. We tend to think of these two fields as completely different. However, both of them are still editing the genome of an organism, and therefore both of them are still genetic modification. The only difference is the place it's done and the time it takes. While the process that got us to New World Fruits is a 100-year waiting process, the science that gets us to modern synthetic biology, if done correctly, is just a matter of a couple of days. Just like the science behind modifying fruits, the only thing modern genetic modification really is doing is just giving a boost up to evolution to humans' favor. Instead of waiting centuries for something to modify or evolve itself to our liking, we're just speeding up the process, and in the end, the only true purpose of synthetic biology really is to make our lives easier, simpler, and better. Already, scientists have engineered rice to produce beta-carotene, the precursor to vitamin A. With GMO technology, the rice that's made will have very high amounts of vitamin A, the vitamin that is also correlated with a decreased chance in blindness. And with this rice, scientists want to implement it in countries where produce and nutrients are not as readily available as in ours, not only to curb hunger, but also vitamin A deficiency and eventually blindness. And I think that's pretty cool. But even so, there's a lot of stigma behind GMOs, and honestly, I can understand a lot of it. Putting foreign genes into bacteria can seem pretty unsettling, and combined with the fact that E. coli is such a common chassis to do so, it kind of turns into the fact that we're making like some sort of sci-fi mutated version of the Chipotle situation. And I completely understand if some people are weirded out by that. But first, let me give some insight on that unsettling feeling. I think a lot of people are unsettled by the fact that we put in genes that are not actually from bacteria into bacteria. After all, there are countless horror films where like, one scientist will take one animal and then smash it with the next, and then chaos ensues and the world goes crazy, and I am glad to report that is not the thing that happens with GMOs. And when we do insert foreign genes into bacteria, they're almost always minuscule. For example, the system that codes for vitamin A or the system that makes rubber from rubber trees. And then after that, scientists have countless tactics that they use to make sure only the gene that we actually want to be inserted gets inserted. And after that, there's no ridiculous consequences or any Frankenstein, it's alive moments. I believe the reason why genetic modification can't expand as a field is because the entire food industry has put this gigantic stigma on the term GMO. And because of that, the entire field itself is burdened. I remember
remember in high school, every year we'd have this fair where we would introduce different fields of science to young kids. And of course, my colleagues and I had a fair there. But time after time again, we would talk to children, some of them not even five years old, and hear them exclaim that GMOs are bad and dangerous and harmful to society without even knowing what GMOs are. And that's the thing that frustrates me. GMOs are so promising. They're also so stigmatized. Right now, scientists are trying to engineer a microorganism to produce all the nutrients that a human child would need in one day, and then putting that into a pill. If this pill ever succeeded, we could implement this in countries in famine, giving starving children the vitamins, minerals, and calories they need every day in the form of just one tablet. And the craziest thing about GMOs is, is that this is just one example of the potential future products we can make. Imagine engineering E. coli to produce rubber that's found in rubber trees. That way we wouldn't even need half the amount of rubber tree plantations in the world and we could cut a gigantic chunk off of deforestation, not only in South America, but Southern Asia. What about protecting endangered species of animals and plants by engineering yeast to produce the drugs that they need for scientists to make expensive and rare medications out of them? What about even helping to repair the holes in the ozone layer by getting E. coli or some other microorganism to make, e to make ozone itself? Genetic modification can do that. We just need the mindset to let that happen. The undeserved stigma that GMOs have makes it so that none of these things will ever come into fruition to the extent that the human race needs it to. This is where you all come in. Now, I'm not just saying that we should go out and mutate everything without any regard to like, public safety or health or ethics, because you know, even I don't think that would work out terribly well. But when 81% of STEM professionals think that genetic modification is already safe, but only 31% of the general public thinks that it even has potential to be safe, that says something. That says we might need to reconsider. As a 17-year-old girl talking at you all on a stage, I can only plant this idea in your head. You know, I can't like engineer some plasmid and then inject it into your brains and change your genome and make you guys act if I wanted to because that doesn't work. But if I plant this idea into your head and then you choose to do something, that's where things start to get moving. Because in order to change a global predisposition, it starts with a new generation. It starts with us kids. And if we recognize genetic modification not only as a legitimate but powerful field, that's when things start to gain momentum. Maybe it'll be education reform. Maybe it'll be policy reform. But regardless, something in our generation needs to change in order to let genetic modification take root and grow. Progress is inevitable. But it's the youth who really decide when that progress will start. As society's new generation, we have the responsibility to decide what will be acceptable and what won't be acceptable. And genetic modification can't start saving lives and working near miracles, at least publicly, until we say it's OK. So maybe it's just telling your friends and family that GMOs won't make you grow a third arm. Maybe it'll be pushing for education reform or policy reform or even joining some associations like BioBuilders or iGEM. But regardless, it's now our responsibility to take on the stigmas of genetic modification. So let's get started. Mm -hmm. <laughs>